brothers and sisters in Christ. There's many things we could, points of entry in today's scriptures um, that could be discussed in this homily. The uh, reading from the prophet Isaiah begs some commentary on the current glorification of the homosexual lifestyle in, a, in this admonition to Sodom and Go Gomorrah to be converted, to cease doing evil and learn to do good. I think everyone here is clear on the teaching of the church with regard to uh, the sin of homosexual acts as well as the true teaching of the church of compassion for all persons. We're all sinners and we all are, stand in need of mercy. It occurred to me, and I'm not gonna make this homily about the, the homosexual, uh, the issue of this homosexual movement, uh, but I just, it occurred to me that uh, the Holy Father's comment, which has been so abused and twisted uh, when he said, who am I to judge? You know, there was a whole preface and uh, premise to that statement, uh, which is if a person is seeking to lead a chaste life, a holy life, and suffers from this affliction, this disorder of same-sex attraction, then they shouldn't be excluded or ostracized from the Christian community. But it, the premise is that they're seeking to lead a holy life. And I would turn that phrase around, who am I to judge? Everyone thinks that uh, they have a right to stand in judgment of the church and its teachings, which are based on the teachings of Christ. St. Paul, uh, in his letter to the Romans, is perfectly clear about uh, those sins which exclude a person from salvation, which include the sins of homosexual acts as well as other uh, injustices or sins, so uh, just to, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I think the thing that we can all focus on for our um, benefit, taking the teaching from our Lord in the gospel today, is on the need to be humble. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. And so humility is really the foundational virtue on which we hope to build a, a life of sanctity. But all virtues are based in humility, and without humility, other virtues just become uh, a cause for pride, which of course is the exact opposite of humility. So we have to have humility. The virtue of humility then, what is, what is it? Really, uh, in, in the most fundamental sense, it could be reduced to truth or sincerity. Uh, where we are in harmony with the truth about God and about ourself. I'd like to just take from the, the uh, spiritual theology compounded here by uh, Adolf Tanqueray, the great teacher on spiritual theology, just about humility. So, this is what he says. This virtue could in some respects be connected with the virtue of justice since it inclines us to mete out to ourselves what, our, what are our just deserts. However, it is generally related to the virtue of temperance because it moderates the sense we have of our own worth. Humility was unknown to the pagans. For them, humility connoted something vile, abject, servile, or ignoble. It was not so with the Jews. Enlightened by faith, the best among them, conscious of their own nothingness, 
and of their wretchedness patiently accepted trials as a means of expiation. God on his part stooped down to help them. He delighted in the prayer of the humble and pardoned the contrite and humbled the sinner and pardoned the contrite and humbled the sinner. Therefore, when our Lord came to preach humility and meekness, the Jews were able to understand him. As for us, we understand him even better after reflecting on the examples of humility he has given us in his hidden life, during his public ministry, and in his passion, and gives us still in his Eucharistic life. So, humility is this supernatural virtue, which gives us knowledge of ourself and inclines us then to reckon ourselves at our true worth and to seek self-effacement and contempt. St. Bernard says, it's a virtue whereby man, through a true knowledge of himself, becomes despicable in his own eyes. This will be better understood when we explain the basis for humility. Humility has a twofold basis, truth and justice. Truth causes us to know ourselves just as we are. Justice inclines us to act upon that knowledge. Now, there's a whole section devoted to humility, but right there, we've heard the nucleus of this humility. And if you have difficult recalling anything else I've said today, just remember that it's based on the example of Christ. That is our greatest example of humility. He who was God did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at, as St. Paul tells us, but he humbled himself to the likeness of a slave and humbled himself even to death on the cross. So Christ divested himself of all his glory, of all of the honors and admiration that was due to him as God to make himself a servant and sacrifice himself for our sake. He was humiliated in Pope Francis, in a, in a homily a few years ago, speaking of humiliated, said humiliation, excuse me, of humility, said that it never arrives without humiliation. And we live in a culture that is pagan, as we heard in this uh, commentary by Tanqueray. The pagans didn't know or practice humility as a virtue. For them, it was uh, a thing of shame to be rejected. But our Lord showed us the opposite, and he tells us today, the greatest among you must be your servant. So humility, then, is this knowledge of self, true knowledge. We are creatures, and apart from God, we are nothing. Without God, we have nothing, and we can do nothing of any uh, good. St. Thomas says, in man two things may be considered, what there is of God and what there is of man. Of man, there is whatever points to defect. That means something is lacking. But of God, all that makes for salvation and perfection. And perfection then is the completeness of, of goodness, of holiness, which is God. And so in as much as we are united to God, then we can be holy, we can be good, and we will attain uh, eventually, after a life uh, practice in faith and humility, we will also attain to glory in Christ, but nothing apart from him. So, in this time of Lent, let us be on guard against false pride. Let us seek to see ourselves as we truly are with all of our faults, our sinfulness, our need for conversion. Humble our egos that are so agitated by this culture of pride that we live in and rather listen 
uh, to the Holy Spirit, who will lead us then to humble ourselves before God and before our neighbor. We're no better than anybody else in the end. Uh, if we do any good, it is because uh, we are in Christ. And in Our Lady's Chapel, where we practice perpetual Eucharistic adoration, we have then the perfect school of humility. Our Lord, who is God, is among us in the humble form and appearance of, of bread with all of his body, blood, soul, and divinity, uh, as it were, humbled in these elements uh, that are so simple as to be even inanimate in appearance. Let us seek then to quell our pride and try to imitate Christ, who went through the passion before he uh, rose again to glory and seek to follow him. And may the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady of Sorrows, help us to accept the cross and to see ourselves as we are and try to be humble and serve as she did so perfectly. Praise be Jesus and Mary.